Welcome to the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show, where we dive deep into the hottest trends in health, beauty, and cosmetic treatments. I'm Dr. Anthony Yoon, America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon. Have you heard of probiotic skincare? What about thread lifts, like the new Silhouette Lift? Or maybe you've heard that there is a new laser that melts your fat while you are at home watching TV. Yes, these are just a few of the fascinating new advances in skincare and anti-aging treatments that most patients and even most doctors don't know about yet. So that's why on this episode of the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show, I've enlisted the help of America's premier beauty guru. She's been in the industry for decades. She's seen highly hyped products and treatments come and go and possibly more than anyone else on the planet has her finger on the pulse of anti-aging treatments. We'll discuss the latest and greatest skincare and anti-aging treatments available today and what you can expect to see in plastic surgeons and dermatologists' offices in the near future. So let's get started. My guest this week is the author of 12 books, contributor to numerous journals and publications, and founder and editor-in-chief of beautyinthebag.com which is a global beauty, aesthetics, and wellness portal. She's an international influencer in the field of cosmetic beauty and medical aesthetics, and a frequent lecturer at conferences around the world. Please welcome my guest, America's beauty guru, Wendy Lewis, to the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Wendy. My pleasure, it's so, so much fun to be here. So when I first started my podcast, I made a list of the people that I knew I had to ask to be on. And some of these people uh, are plastic surgeons, some of these are dermatologists, some of these are fitness experts, and only one is a true beauty guru. And you're on that list, so I'm so excited to have you on the show because I think you've got so much information and knowledge that you can share with my listeners and my viewers. Thank you so much. That's quite an honor. <laughs> well, let's start by talking about kind of the less invasive stuff. So, you know, for people who don't know about you, Wendy Lewis is a beauty guru. I mean, you know the top plastic surgeons, the top dermatologists, the top beauty experts around the country. You've written, I don't know how many books you've published. How many books is that now? We're, I'm on my 12th. 12th. 12 books all on beauty and anti-aging and the industry. So let's start with skincare. So a lot of my listeners are not necessarily interested in going under the knife. They're not, they're not interested in plastic surgery. But th what they are interested in is something that you know a lot about, is skincare treatments. So what are the hottest and most effective skincare treatments that you know about uh, today? Well, that's, that's a big, big question, and I think you're, uh, you're on to something. I mean, before anyone ever gets to surgery, and you know this is a plastic surgeon, I mean, do you want to see a patient who hasn't taken care of her skin yet is, is in your chair looking for a facelift, it really doesn't work that way anymore. And I think consumers are so much more educated. So I like to try to categorize some of the new things that are out as the three Ps, prejuvenation, polyaging, and probiotics. Okay. And I, really, I love this term and it's not mine. I can't claim credit for it. The first time I ever heard it was from a dermatologist um, who you know named Jill Weibel in Miami. Mm -hmm. The whole concept of prejuvenation is about preventing the signs of aging and doing whatever you can on your own before they ever go to see you, Dr. Yoon. So prejuvenation, I think, is a really important trend. Mm -hmm. Probiotics, we're hearing a lot about, and we're, I mean, every five minutes, I, I feel like I'm getting press releases on a new probiotic skincare brand, and this is, you know, good bacteria that's really making, making a lot of claims for helping the skin in terms of inflammatory diseases like acne and redness, and that shows a lot of promise. So not only are we ingesting it, but we're putting it on our face or our skin. And then polyaging is relatively new as a term, and I think this is a big concept now. We're seeing a lot of the sunscreen manufacturers talking about how to prevent aging from pollution. And having just come back from India, wow, with my skin <laughs> dirty at the end of a day, it, it leaves New York in the dust with all that traffic. It was fascinating to me. And that's the first thing I thought of, like, wow, now I really get what these scientists are talking about because I can see it on my own face after being out in, in a day in, in the streets of Delhi. So that was fascinating. Another big trend, sunscreens to prevent from from light therapy, HEV. I even read recently 
that um, sitting at your computer is now going to, going to affect your skin without protection. So I find myself now, and maybe maybe this is um, overkill, but putting on sunscreen before I actually sit at my desk because I get mm-hmm. so little daytime uh, in my life. I'm always at a computer. Is that something you tell your patients? I don't yet. Uh, I think I, I know there are people who are concerned about that. There are people who are concerned about EMFs and all this other type of stuff. And I haven't gone quite to that. Now, going back to what you mentioned before about the probiotics, this is something that probably a lot of people haven't heard about. And I find yeah. this fascinating because... One of the hottest topics just in overall health, and we've covered this on, on this podcast before, is the importance of the microbiome. Yep. And when people talk about the microbiome, most of the time they're thinking about the intestines, your, your guts. But right. we actually have the skin microbiome that we're finding can be a lot more um, influential to the health of our skin than we ever realized. And so this whole probiotic skincare is this very new trend that I'm also interested in learning a little more about as well. Yeah. It, so. It's really interesting because there are a lot of new brands and a lot of them have some really good science behind them, you know, a, and coming out of big manufacturers that are definitely interested in this trend. So I, I don't think this is going away. I think it's part of this whole wellness thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it makes good sense, even to a lay person like me who's not a scientist. Now, what do you think about this trend towards um, the more natural types of products, you know, more to natural skincare products. You know, I know there are a lot of people doing beauty counter now, you know, they're, they're lobbying Congress. Do you think that, um, in order to, to get all natural products that you have to give up some of the results? Well, you know, I'm not an, I'm not a nature girl to say the least, you know, <laughs> I am not, you're not going to see me walking in the woods anytime soon. Um, But, I mean, there is a huge portion of the population that, you know, reads ingredients, as we all should, and is very interested in natural natural products. To me, the big challenge is it is really expensive to create a really organic product. Everything can be considered natural. Mm -hmm. So there's the the difference between natural and organic, and there are are actually very few 100% certified organic product lines out there. And I think consumers are very often misled and duped, so to speak, into paying for something that they think they're getting all natural and they really aren't. So I I think there's going to be more regulation towards this. Um, And many companies that call themselves natural, natural is one thing, but organic is a whole different ballgame. It's not it's not important to me personally. Mm -hmm. I want to see results. So I'll give up. I'll give up some of the natural component of it. And I think we are seeing brands that marry the two. I mean, a good example of that is Tata Harper, who comes out of a farm in Vermont and grows all her own stuff. But her products are really based kind of like a, a, the marriage between you know organic ingredients and yet something that is going to do something functional to the skin. And I think that, to me, that is a smarter way to buy skincare, something that's not only organic or natural, if that's what you want, but you want to see results because let's be honest, we spend a lot of money on these products and we, and we take the time to use them. You want to see a result. Yeah, and I totally agree with you. I think where I'm going with a lot of what I'm doing is, you know, I do think that if you have a patient, you know, if I have a patient come in and, you know, he or she has got really severe aging of the skin, just terrible sun damage and age spots and all of that, uh, to put them on something that's all natural, I don't know that they're going to quite get the results that they're looking for with it. And so to go for a shorter period of time, six months where we hit, hit them with some, um, you know, kind of high potency, uh, lab tested skincare products that can really reverse their aging. And then when they're looking good, that's when we switch them over because now we don't necessarily have to have their skin being, um, exposed to all the chemicals that if the skin's already looking good, now let's maintain. So that's the direction I'm kind of going, but I totally hear you. I mean, you know, in the plastic surgery industry, it's all about results and, you know, it doesn't matter how natural it is. If you're not going to get results, then patients aren't going to be happy. Yeah, I think your philosophy makes a lot of sense because if that's the patient who doesn't want, you know, chemicals or additives or is afraid of the word acid in products, that makes perfect sense. And at least you're getting to them, them to a point where they need maintenance and maybe maintenance you could you could get with an organic or more natural type brand. I just think the public doesn't understand the difference and so they're willing to fork over money for something that may not give them what they need. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, let's transition now. Well, let's transition now from the actual skincare products to some of the aesthetic treatments. Now, um, 
you don't have to have surgery, obviously, to look younger. And there are so many different options that people have short of going under the knife. What are some of the uh, treatments that you, you know, if people ask you, hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing all these products, I've got, you know, my skin's looking pretty good. I don't necessarily want to go to a plastic surgeon, but maybe even some at-home treatments or some in-office, non-invasive. What are some of the ones that you recommend or that you found to be helpful for people? No, I think that's a really important question. So in my experience, the first sort of port of entry is going to be, you know, my skincare is working, but I'm not getting enough. I still have clogged pores, which women hate. I've still got loss of radiance. I look in the mirror. I feel like my, my skin is flat and dull. So to me, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to a peel. And I think the at-home peels have gotten better and better and better. Um, and so that's a perfectly natural sort of extension of topical skincare. Mm -hmm. So that's going to help with some browns. You know, they're not going to do what you can do in your clinic, but it is going to help a little bit with pigment. It's going to help a little bit with tone and texture and pores that women go crazy about. And maybe some um, a minor like crow's feet and superficial wrinkles. And then the next step up to me, I mean, I think aesthetic treatments, honestly, the gateway product, and I'm sure this is true in your practice, is going to be Botox. Mm -hmm or botulinum toxin of one form or another. Mm -hmm. So you can go from sort of an at-home peel to a clinic peel, maybe even microdermabrasion, which I'm a huge fan of, and that's a great treatment for all age groups and men. And then really into the toxins, then the fillers, and then we start looking at light-based treatments like IPL or BBL, and then you move up to you know the more heavy artillery like lasers and radio frequency and all the other energy based devices that are on the market. And to me, that's usually the most logical progression. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in New York, you're you're in Michigan, so I promise you that in my zip code, we're jumping up to, up from one level to another very very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's not that different from LA. I think you know sometimes in the Midwest, people are a little more conservative and they may go a little a little slower up that trajectory into getting into, you know, heavy duty lasers and then coming in to a plastic surgeon like yourself. But there's a lot on offer today. And most of these things work to some degree. I think it's all about perception and, and your expectations. What would be a, a couple of maybe treatments that you would recommend for somebody who they're, they're listening today, they're watching today, they're a novice at it, and they're taking good yep. care of their skin. They say, okay, what can I do that's fairly economical, but, but can hopefully see some results. And okay. we're just talking about anti-aging. Let's say somebody who's in their 50s, um, uh -huh. they're Caucasian, they've overall taken good care of themselves, but obviously they see time as taking its toll. What are some things that, that, a couple of things that you would recommend that you found to be effective for you or for your clients? Sure. Well, someone, I mean, in their 50s, I mean, we're looking at sagging and wrinkles. I mean, that's pretty fairly advanced. So would I say you start with a hydrofacial? No, because you need a little more than that, although hydrofacial be, might be nice. But I would look into absolutely the injectable. So I think, you know, obviously a toxin, either uh, whether it be Dysport or Xeomin or obviously Botox as the market leader would be number one. Number two, I'd go to some form of a filler, maybe for the lower eyelids and maybe, you know, to help help a little bit around the mouth. And these are typically areas that I, I think people react to the most and maybe fill in some cheeks if there's a loss of volume. And and that's probably going to be an HA, a hyaluronic acid, of which there are so many brands on the market that are FDA approved and very safe. Then the next step up from that, I think, is going to be tone and texture. So I would look at it, maybe a, a BBL or, a, or a, an IPL treatment because that's you know basic, bog standard, light-based technology that we've had for years that really, really works nicely. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the treatments that I'm really a big fan of right now is the Cyton Halo treatment, mm -hmm. which is a fractionated laser treatment with two wavelengths. And I think that gives a beautiful radiant and glow restored to the face and tone and texture. Your skin feels smooth, a little bit like, like kind of the results of a Fraxel. I actually prefer the Halo, but that's really popular right now among the audience that you're describing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the next the next step up from that is going to be skin tightening. I have to be honest, in my career, I've yet to see a skin tightening device that's really wowed me. Mm -hmm. um, but there are many on the market. And, you know, for some women, they do really well. I think it works better, frankly, on someone who's on the younger side and doesn't have a very heavy face and maybe just a little little tiny bit of skin laxity around the jawbone. What, what do you think? I, I agree. And that's one thing I was thinking of asking you was, you know, what 
what are some of the issues that we just aren't really that effective in treating today? And I think the big one, honestly, is skin tightening. I can't tell you how many patients come in, they say, look, I don't want a tummy tuck, but I've got some loose skin, what do I do? And the problem is, is that there really is no in-between of doing nothing and doing a tummy tuck. Now, I totally agree. as you and I know, there have been devices, radio frequency and laser devices that have claimed to tighten up body skin, but they've always been so disappointing that I just don't refer out for it anymore. I just tell them like, when, I tell them when there is something out there that works, I'll let you know, but right now, don't spend your money. You yeah, see, that I think that's the biggest consideration. I mean, the way I used to talk to consumers, it's like you have two choices. You either do one big thing or a lot of little things. And, and still, with skin tightening, I don't think we're there. I don't think we've nailed it. And it, the price point can be expensive. So you can see someone who's spending, I mean, three to $5,000 on a skin tightening treatment. And, you know, you don't want to see anybody be disappointed because that's a fair amount of money to spend. And if they put a little bit more to that, you know, they could probably save up for surgery and get a better result. One of the things that I think is doing well in many parts of the country, I, I don't know if you have experience with it yet, but are the uh, suture suspension lifts, mm -hmm. um, in particular Silhouette Insulip. I saw a demonstration this week in New York, and I think, I think that's a nice little niche in between like fillers and short of surgery, where it's not really a skin tightening a procedure, but it's a lifting procedure. Mm -hmm. It's not a facelift. But it, it can give you some lifting in the mid-face and maybe the, the early jowl area. But this is where your experience, I think, is key. Because you've been doing this for several decades. You've been an expert in the field. You've seen plastic surgeons you know, hit the peak and then drop off. And ideas that are hot kind of hit big. And then people find out that doesn't work. I tell you, my experience with Threadless, when I first started my practice in 0304, there were some doctors really doing those. And they yeah. were touting them. And they were on TV and this and that. And... Then the studies really started coming out, and we've had people who are highly respected colleagues, some of the best plastic surgeons in the world doing it, and they get maybe a year result out of it. And those sutures were permanent, and, and I've seen patients come in and say, that, look, it lasted a few months, and now I've got these little prickly things sticking out of my skin. I mean, so I have not gone to that. Now, my understanding is that Silhouette Lift is, they're absorbable sutures, I think. They're totally uh, absorbable. Yeah. Oops. The U.S. are resorbable, and I think that makes that that's a big difference. But do you think that the that the technique is all that different now than it was before? I don't know if it's the technique that's different. I think the I think the technology is different. Mm -hmm. But I I don't disagree in that. I mean, if you're looking for something that's going to last five years, this is not it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's well, a short term, and usually I think does well in combination with other things like fillers and toxins. What are your thoughts about some of the skin tiny treatments for the face and neck? Do you feel that, because for the body, I think there's just, there's just no hope right now. Yeah, there's, there's, do you think with the face and neck, it's a little different because you're dealing with yes. a smaller area? Uh, well, I have to say, I have seen some decent results. I mean, you know, some people swear by Ulthera. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's very variable, but I mean, I have seen good results from Ulthera, and then I've seen not so good results from Ulthera, but there, I think it has a lot to do with how many lines you're doing in the treatment, and then it can get expensive. And also the patient selection is an issue. Yeah, um, yeah. The other thing that I think is interesting are the combination devices, like the microneedling devices now. Mm -hmm. I am seeing some interesting results on some patients, like Profound and the Lutronic device, and IndyMed has one. These sort of RF microneedling devices, mm -hmm. they're, they're not pleasant. They can be uncomfortable. But I am seeing more skin tightening from some of the results, at least that I've seen at meetings. Yeah, we have Fractor in my office. Uh -huh. and, That's um, and the next one, I mean, what's going on now is that the microneedling companies that just do the small microneedling devices are not expensive to buy, they're, just gonna, they're starting to, to put radio frequency through those. So I think that's going to cause the cost of some of these treatments to drop significantly. And I, and I think mm -hmm. the availability of RF microneedling is going to expand significantly yeah. as those costs drop. How, how have you, has been your experience with Fractor? I've seen it do very well with acne mm -hmm. scars. Yeah, I think overall it's been very good, you know. And um, it, it, it was one of the first, my understanding, to the market, you know, we've had it for quite a while, and, and I do think it works very, very well. And obviously, we select patients. I do a lot of facelifts. I probably do one a week. So it's not a, uh, the, the same thing as something like that. But when you are looking at tightening of the, of the skin, the face, and rejuvenation, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things, too, that um, you pride yourself on is that you really, you know the industry in and out. You know what's coming out. You have an inside track. So I'd love to hear your thoughts of any new 
or up and coming products or treatments that you're excited about and you think that uh, are going to hit the market maybe over the next year or two that mm -hmm. could could be big hitters and things that yeah. could change people's lives? Well, I, mean, I think topical toxins, we can't overlook that because that's been around for a long time and we still don't have FDA clearance on any of these, but the Revance product is in the running and that that's going to be interesting. I mean, it may not work for everything, but it's another way of delivering neurotoxin. Mm -hmm. um, some of the fillers that are coming from Europe, if they come here, like Elance is pretty far along, which is an interesting polymer filler with very long lasting results in Europe and around the world. I don't know if you're familiar with it. That one I haven't um, heard of yet. It's E-L-L-A-N-S-E. I've seen really nice results like for hands. It, <laughs> it's kind of a tissue stimulator along the lines of like a Sculptra and a Radies. But that's a nice product. The Europeans are excited about it and we don't have it yet, but it's coming eventually. It's in the FDA pipeline. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. interested in seeing what's going to come from Chroma and Perlenium. You know, the two, those are two companies that are eyeing a U.S. launch and both have a portfolio of products that we haven't seen before. You no know, more HAs. I think they also have some sutures of some form or another. That'll be interesting. And some other toxins. I think there are actually more toxins than we know about on their way. I mean, certainly in Asia, it is unbelievably commonplace. One of the most exciting things I've seen in a while, and you're gonna laugh, but I see it on Facebook, and I, I haven't yet called the company to get more information, is that Silken. Oh, I know which uh, one you're talking about. Oh my God, yes, yes, please tell me it works. I wanna be the first uh, customer. So I'm assuming you're talking about the LiPo, Silken LiPo? Yes, oh yes. my God. Yes. That's the first time I've seen it. Do you have any more firsthand knowledge spill? No. You know, I've worked with them in the past with some of their other products. This one I have not. And um, it's interesting because they're doing some type of crowdsourcing or something with it too. Yes. So I, I just recently learned about it. I'm looking into it. But um, so for those of you who are watching and listening, basically what we're talking about, Silicon is an at-home kind of laser device company. And so they've got uh, laser hair removal, um, you know, red light for the skin, blue light and stuff like that, that you basically do at home on your, uh, on your own. So they've got this device called Silken Lipo. It's not really, I think, available yet, or it just became available. It's, it's, this is like ridiculously I don't think new. It is. Okay. And they did some type of crowdsourcing or crowdfunding or something with it. And the idea, my understanding, and I don't know if you've looked into it much, but it's low light laser therapy, which I'm still a little uh, iffy on. But, um, you know, it started with Zorona, and it's the idea that you can take what are essentially almost like laser pointer lasers. You know, it's cold light, it's cold laser, so it doesn't burn you or anything like that. And the idea is that if that penetrates the skin, it can cause the fat cells to actually open up and disperse the fat and cause the fat eventually to be um, basically peed or pooped out. Probably pooped out, I guess, <laughs> by the body. And so the idea then is you put this stuff on, and after I think it's like eight weeks it takes, though, you can lose several inches from different parts of your body. So. I mean, it makes sense. It just, it sounds like it's going to take a long time, and I don't think cool sculpting is going to be replaced. But wow, it's interesting. I've never that's the first time I've seen anything like that. Yeah, no, I, I mean, this, this I is big. Admit. And if it works, it's going to be huge. Now, I think the <laughs> next step, though, is going to be the at home type of cool sculpting ish type devices, okay. and that's going to be a while, I think, from now. But eventually, it's I do think we'll get too. that. Wouldn't that oh, be crazy? Okay. Well, I think we've covered a lot of great information here. I think the, the biggest takeaway for me is that you also know about the Silken Lipo and are super excited about it. So this is something, I, there's so many exciting things coming around the bend in our field. And um, the great thing about it is most of these things that are so exciting are so accessible and easy for patients now. I mean, it's not, hey, there's this new surgical technique that takes four hours. It's, it's just like the Silken Lipo. You can t hopefully take this home and get rid of fat on your own. Yeah, it's a miracle, really. All right. Well, if if anybody uh, is the beauty guru, it is Wendy Lewis. Her website is beautyinthebag.com. So if you're interested in learning more about the field of cosmetic treatments, whether it's skincare, whether it's um, you know dermatological type dermatologic treatments, whether it's plastic surgery. Uh, Wendy knows it. Go to beautyinthebag.com. She even recommends certain plastic surgeons and other doctors to see. Now, Wendy, if you could give one takeaway for those people who are watching and listening today, uh, as Wendy Lewis, beauty guru, what would that takeaway piece of advice be? Hmm. Oh, well, I could give so many. Let's, let's, well, how about what you really need to do to look, live, and be better? To me, number one, and something that I've struggled with my whole life is keep your weight down. 
Keep your face, neck, chest, and hands out of the sun, darling. Keep that sunscreen on and keep it covered and get enough of every nutrient your body needs. Then go see Dr. Yoon when you need some extra help. Well, I think that's great advice. Thank you so much. So Wendy Lewis, you can find her at beautyinthebag.com. She's got a lot of great information out there. If you're interested in looking your best, anything from the right skincare products all the way up to plastic surgery, she's got all the information for you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Lots of fun. Yeah. Well, we'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Okay. Anthony Yoon, America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon. This is the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show. Do you want to look 10 years younger without having surgery? Well, my best-selling book, The Age Fix, will tell you how. I spent the past 17 years learning the secrets to turning back the clock and have written all the best of these secrets in this book. This includes The Age Fix Diet, simple changes to what you eat that can make a huge difference in your appearance. I'll share with you a simple skincare routine to keep aging and wrinkles at bay. And I'll share with you the best secrets to treat every single beauty and aging problem there is. From age spots to wrinkles, saggy skin to bad breath, saddlebags to hair loss. And almost all of these can be effectively treated without surgery. So are you ready to turn back the clock and kick Father Time's backside? If so, check out The Age Fix. Now if you purchase it on my website, dryoon.com, you'll get over $10 off the cover price, free shipping, and you'll receive several free gifts, including a bonus chapter that you can only get by purchasing the book there. Thank you for making The Age Fix such a huge success.